We're now ready to apply analysis of the first and second derivative of a function to sketch its graph accurately. Consider the problem of finding all the extreme points, inflection points, the intervals on which the function f of x equals to 4x cubed minus x to the fourth is increasing or decreasing and concave up or concave down. So the first step in this graphical analysis problem is to compute the first derivative. Okay, so uh, that's simple to do using the power rule. Okay, f prime of x would equal to 12x squared minus 4x cubed. Next, we'd like to factor completely the formula for f prime. So we see that the greatest common factor is 4x squared. Thus, f prime of x we write as 4x squared times 3 minus x. Now, setting the first derivative equal to 0, we find that either 4x squared would have to be 0, which means that x is 0, or 3 minus x is 0 which would imply that x equals to 3. Thus, these two values, x equal to 0 and x equals to 3, would be our critical numbers. So we'll put those two numbers in boxes and call them the critical numbers. OK, uh, now let's proceed to differentiate the first derivative. OK, so in other words, we'll find the second derivative of f. So, so doing that, we come back to our first form for f prime and use the power rule to obtain the derivative of 12x squared, 24x, minus the derivative of 4x cubed, which is 12x squared. Again, let's try to factor f double prime completely. So, the greatest common factor in this case will be a 12x. So we factor out the 12x, which leaves a remaining factor of 2 minus x. And we notice where f double prime is going to equal to 0, right? And that would happen if and only if either 12x is 0, which would mean x is 0, right? Or uh, 2 minus x is 0 which would make x equal to 2. And so let's, uh, let's put those numbers in boxes as well, because we're going to use these values as well to help split up our real line into various sub-intervals, OK? So if we think the domain of our function f, of course, is all real numbers. And so let's uh, then split up our, our x axis into subintervals based okay on the one hand our critical numbers 0 and 3 and so to indicate that they're critical numbers let's put them uh, we'll circle those numbers and we also had uh, the number 0 and 2 okay so 2 would fall in somewhere here uh, those of course were numbers where the second derivative is 0 so to indicate the second derivative was 0 at those points, let's say we put those in boxes. And so thus, we have our number line split up into several intervals, right? The intervals of all numbers less than 0, the numbers between 0, 2, 2, and 3, and 3, infinity. And, and so specifically, and analyzing the sign of the first derivative, the sign of, say, f prime of x over the real line, we see that, uh, checking out this formula going back here for f prime of x, specifically notice that whenever x is negative, 4x squared would be positive valued, and 3 minus x would also be positive. So f prime of x is a product of two positive numbers, 
So it's always positive whenever x is less than zero. So that means the function f has positive slope to its graph, thus f is increasing on the interval from minus infinity to zero. Okay, we also see that if we take a point, say x, between the critical numbers, between zero and three, then four x squared is still positive valued, of course, and three minus x would also be positive because x is less than three. So still, f prime is positive for all the x's between the critical numbers zero and three. So that means that the function f continues to increase, in fact, all the way from minus infinity to three, f is increasing. However, when we finally substitute in a value for x larger than three, that's going to make the factor three minus x negative, which makes the first derivative negative value. So our function f has negative slope on the interval three infinity, so f is indeed decreasing on this interval. So we see that f, where is it increasing? From minus infinity to three, it's decreasing on the interval three infinity. Now let's uh, analyze the sign of the second derivative function over the real line. Okay, so what we see relative to the sign of f double prime of x, okay, would be that, uh, again, let's focus now on this factor form for the formula for f double prime. And we see that uh, whenever x is negative valued, 12x would be negative, but two minus x would be positive. So the second derivative is, is a negative times a positive would be negative on the interval from minus infinity to zero. So that makes the function f, right, curve down, right? f is concave down on the interval minus infinity to zero and also increasing. So what does that entail about the shape of the graph of our function? Well, it's increasing and curving down, so, so the shape must have been something like that, okay? From minus infinity to zero. Now, what about at values of x between 0 and 2. So in such case, 12x is going to be positive. 2 minus x is also positive. So we have a product of two positive numbers is positive. So that means that the graph of f is going to be concave up on the interval from 0 to 2. So we know that f is increasing and concave up on this interval 0, 2. Thus, the shape of its graph must be something like that, increasing and curving up. Now, what happens on the interval to infinity? Well, whenever x is greater than 2, 12x is positive, but 2 minus x will be negative, okay? So the function is always concave down, okay? So f is concave down on the interval from 2, to infinity. Okay, so specifically between 2 and 3, it's going to be increasing in concave down. So the shape of its graph increasing but curving down would be something like that. On the interval 3 infinity, it's decreasing and curving down. Thus the shape would be more like that. So, so essentially, if we were to, uh, to, to take these, these four uh, arcs and connect them, we should get a fairly good sense for, for the shape of our function f of x, 4x cubed minus x to the fourth. Okay, so, so let's just uh, do that and, and see what happens, okay? So here's our, our function f, right, uh, 4x cubed, minus x to the fourth, which of course, if you wanted to, you could have factored out for that matter, x cubed and get x cubed times four minus x. Now, maybe I'll just uh, try to make it look a little nicer in my graph this time. 
let's uh, pull out my ruler and try to uh, draw in our x-axis here in the picture, say something like this. Okay, and then maybe I'm going to scale the axis, you know, with a few points. Uh, okay, so, so perhaps uh, we'll start out here with uh, x, let's say, uh, minus 1, right? We notice that the points of interest lie between 0 and 3. Let's go a little, you know, to the left. So, so say, start out at, at minus 1. Uh, so then uh, here would be up to, say, 4 on the x axis. And then we'll also sketch in sketch in our, our y axis in the picture here. So let, let's try to do that as well. Okay, and we'll scale our y axis. And we'll see the y values get, get kind of large. So let's scale our y axis in in units of 7, so they say that 7, 14, 21, 28, here would be like minus 7 along y. Okay. And, and let's uh, notice the following, right? What are the values of the function at our, at our points of interest? Okay, so of course, uh, uh, f of zero uh, is going to be equal to, you know, zero, right? No question about that. Zero, zero is a point on the graph, and it's a point where the concavity changes. Thus, we're going to get an inflection point at zero, zero. Okay, what happens to f at two? Well, that would be two to the third is eight. 4 minus 2 is 2, 8 times 2 is 16. At 2, we, at 2, 16, we also see there is a change in concavity. So this point, 2, 16, will be another point of inflection for our graph. Okay, and then we notice uh, what happens at 3. Well, f at 3 will be 3 to the third, 27 times 4 minus 3 is 1, is 27. So you could see that because the graph is always increasing to the left of 3 and decreasing on the right side of 3, that at 3 we must achieve a maximum value. So indeed, 27 will be both a relative maximum and the absolute maximum value for our function. Okay, and then the other thing kind of we could clearly see from this factor form for f is that f of 4 is clearly going to be 0. So we will get, in addition to the, the x-intercept at the origin, we'll have 4, 0 as another x-intercept for the graph of f. And maybe just to get another function value, say when x is less than 0, so what if we evaluate f at minus 1, we would get minus 1 to the third or minus 1, times 4 minus a minus 1, 4 plus 1 is 5. So the value of f would be negative 1 at 5. So that is just to get an extra point, you know, on the graph of f. So maybe here's about minus 5 on our x-axis, I'm sorry, on our y-axis. We also wanted to indicate, so this is, you know, 14. So 16 would be around here on our y-axis, and then also 27, right, if that's 28, you know, 27, just going to be slightly below, would be at about that height on the axis. So now let's see if we could, you know, indeed locate these points. So at minus 1, f is minus 5. That's one point on our graph. We know that at, at 0, the first derivative was 0, so at the origin, you know, we're going to have zero slope to the graph, right? A horizontal tangent line there. At 2, the height of the graph was 16. So 2, 16, we find in our picture to be a point of inflection for the graph, right? And then 327, that turned out to be 
the high point on the graph, okay? The relative and absolute maximum point. And then we had this other uh, intercept, x-intercept at x equals to 4, okay, along our x-axis. So that's it, here's x. Um, and so, so again, at uh, 327, the graph has zero slope, right? The first derivative was zero there. And perhaps uh, what we could do is also note additionally that um, at the inflection point 216, what the slope of the graph is. Well, that would be the value of the first derivative at 2. So if we go back to our formula here for uh, the first derivative, okay, and, and we evaluate this formula when x equals to 2, notice that we would get um, 4 times 2 squared, so 4 times 4, right, and then times 3 minus 2 is 1, equals to 16, right? So what that's telling us that 16 is, is the slope of the graph of f, right, uh, at the point uh, uh, 216, right, 2 f of 2, which was 216. So, so geometrically, we know, yeah, that if we draw in the line at 216 having slope 16, right, which would mean that its x-intercept would be at 1, 0, right? So, so this would be the tangent line to the graph, okay, at the point 216. So now using all this information, including this information about concavity and monotonicity, we should be able to get a fairly good sketch of the graph of this function, right? So initially, right, it's increasing and concave down from minus infinity to zero, and it has a zero uh, slope at the origin. So the graph must be rising like this, right? Similar to what we had in our drawing here. Now between 0 and 2, right, it's going to be continue to increase, but it's concave up. So its graph, right, lies above the tangent line until we reach the inflection point at 216. See, so, so it's curving up like this, right, it has tangent of slope 16 at the point 216. And then to the right of that point, right, it shifts to be concave down and still increasing until we hit the, the extreme point 327, at which point we have zero slope. So now you see the graph would have to be rising like that, right? So there's a shift in the concavity at 216. And then finally, we know that to the right of, of uh, x equals to 3, the graph will be decreasing and concave down. So now it curves downward, passing through the x-axis again at x equals to 4. So, so this would have to be the general shape of our, our graph, you know, y equals to f of x. Okay, and again, we see that we had these uh, these two inflection points, right, would be at uh, 216 and uh, 0, 0, okay, and we had this point, 327, which was both the relative and the absolute maximum point, maximum point on our graph, okay is the point 327. And, uh, and, and we see that there, there are no um, relative or absolute minimum points for this, for this uh, graph. Indeed, the, uh, the domain of f, right, being all real numbers, the range of f, right, extends from minus infinity up to and including uh, 
positive 27. And so, so again, just to maybe write down finally the details, where is F increasing? So we hit F is increasing on the interval from minus infinity up to three inclusive. Uh, F was decreasing on the interval uh, starting from three and extending out to infinity. As far as the concavity, right, we had that uh, F is concave up, right, on which intervals? Well, the open interval zero to two, right, is actually the, the only interval on which F was concave up. And on the other hand, we see that F is concave down, both on the interval from minus infinity to zero, minus infinity to zero, and on the interval to infinity. Okay, so, so this would be a fairly complete analysis on the, the shape of the graph of this polynomial function. So I hope you found this example to be helpful, and uh, th thanks for watching.